The copy and fill file instructions are the first two that we're going to do in the file miscellaneous instructions group. <clears throat> the copy, COP instruction, copies a file of words from one location to another. A file would be two or more words, so if you had 11 words that you wanted to copy from their existing location into another location, you would use the file copy. How many words you can copy with one copy instruction depends on your processor and sometimes the data type. The second instruction is the fill file. With the fill file instruction we fill the entire file of two or more words with the same value from the source. So for a copy instruction, a COP instruction, your source size and destination size will be the same length of words. For the fill file, your source will be one word and the destination will be two or more words. In this lab, we had you delete all of your logic and add these two rungs. <coughs> You probably discovered that you do not need to type in the pound symbol whenever you're working with the file. After you have the logic typed in, save, download, and go online. All inputs in the off position. Open data file N7 and lock it on top. Notice the difference between the source and the two instructions. The pound symbol is only present to indicate that the source and or destination can be more than one element or more than one word. It is a file. Whenever you see the pound sh sign show up, that means that the source of the destination represents or can represent more than one word. The FLL or fill file instruction copies one word into one or more words, where the copy instruction copies the same quantity from the source location to the destination location. I had you fill up the integers N70 through N79 with integer values 1 through 10. Now you could use any integers you want between minus 32,768 and as high as 32,767 in each of the elements. However, I always use sequential values that somewhat match the memory locations that allows me to more easily catch any anomalies in the logic. In other words, if you use sequential values, if an anomaly shows up, it'll be a value that turns up where you don't expect it. But if they're just random numbers, you're unlikely to notice. Now, you toggle input 0 on then off while observing N710 through 19. So our copy instruction, copy file, we copy the source length of 10 starting at N70 to the destination of N710 length of 10. Did the values copy into the destination? Toggle input 1 on and off. Did the value in the source word copy into all of the words at the destination? Change the value in B30 to 2697 and then toggle input 1 on and off. Did the value in the source word copy into all the words in the destination? The copy and fill file instructions are very simple and straightforward. However, you may find them used in very highly convoluted or it's easier to say complicated to analyze logic. What we've shown you here is just a real simple demonstration of how these instructions behave. Now the source in either one of these instructions could be one of the words in the destination. So in the copy file instruction we could have copied say N712 length of 10 to N710 length of 10. Basically, that would have taken the words 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and moved them up two places in the stack. We could have, in the fill file 
instruction, taken N712 and copied it to N710 for length of 10. Now you're writing over yourself, but the point is, as long as you stay within the boundaries of a file, the source can be part of the destination. It's real typical when tracking the position of cartons on a conveyor to have a pulse generation that triggers a copy file instruction to copy a group of words that represent the length of the conveyor to one word higher in memory and keep doing that. So I keep shifting the values up through memory to represent the cartons by product code moving on the conveyor.